even though the uh, time of the commute is withdrawn and there's other things that are lessened, you know, some of us are homeschooling. It's just leading to so many crazy new complex problems for a lot of people. And it's hard to not let it run away with you a bit. So I understand where everybody is at, and I'm hoping that the tools and the protocols that are delivered in this summit are going to get you from here to there with much less anxiety and stress. Welcome back to the Essentially You podcast, all about reinventing your health with safer, cheaper, more effective natural solutions and powerful lifestyle changes so that you become the CEO of your health. I am your host, Dr. Marisa Snyder. Let me know, are you also in quarantine with me right now? Because today marks our 10th day in quarantine as I record this new episode for you. Now, I know that change in a routine is hard. It's stressful and it throws everything out of balance. The recent sweeping closures and quarantines have left many of us wondering what to do next. In light of this, I want to share some of the things that my family and I are doing to prepare for a potentially stricter quarantine so that we can do our best to respect the guidelines. I also invited one of my dearest friends, Dr. Mary Clifton, the creator of the Pandemic Recovery Summit, to speak on some of the best practices for preparing you during this time of uncertainty and adversity. Now, the big question that I'm getting every single day is how much caution should we really take right now? And what I want to invite you to do is to be very cautious. This virus is smart. It's highly contagious. And I don't think you're going to regret being safer rather than sorry. Luckily, this time right now doesn't have to be wasted time. Maybe you'll be able to look back and appreciate all that you were able to spend time at home and time with your loved ones. Maybe looking back, you'll be able to see this time as when you started prioritizing your own self-care. Now, you know I love self-care, but I have been really good on my morning and evening rituals, and it has made all of the difference. So instead of falling into fear, let's reclaim this time in our homes as a time to refocus on the things that really matter. Now, I just FaceTimed with my mom a couple hours ago, and it felt so good to catch up with her. And one of the things that she said that really surprised me is that she was really happy to be home. She was happy to go through her house, reorganize her life and her home. Now, you should know that my mom is always running from here to there. The apple does not fall far from the tree. She runs her own business and she is a rock star in like every category you could possibly imagine. So to hear her say that she's excited for time at home, time that she really deserves, just fills my heart with so much joy and gratitude. Now, over the last week, I have been busy gathering information for you on everything that you need to know to get through this quarantine with ease and grace. And I have detailed it all in one incredible resource blog. Now, this resource has everything that you need, and it'll be in the show notes for this episode as well as on my website at drmarisa.com. Now, the first part of this resource focuses on how to stay informed. Now, I know the news is hard to watch right now, but it's important for us to stay on top of these ever-changing recommendations and guidelines so that you can set yourself and your family up for success. So here's some things that you can do right now. Number one, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Instagram, I've been doing expert interviews pretty much every single day, giving you meditation, stress techniques, healthy eating strategies, immunity boosting strategies. I mean, across the board, I am bringing the best of the best on for about 15 minutes every single day, and they are on IG Live or IGTV. Also, Facebook, I have a ton of great resources as well. I will be passing along all kinds of tips and updates and recommendations in this resource and in my blog. And don't worry, I promise to keep the hormone content coming because I know that your health does not get put on hold just because we have all this craziness going on. 
You can also continue to catch up on the Essentially You podcast. As you know, two episodes per week. And what I love so much is that I've had some great interviews so far. One on episode 172 with Dr. Elisa Song to know about the coronavirus. And then I did a personal episode on episode 175 on my top ways to immediately boost your immune system and stay healthy with very specific immune-driven content. Now, I also recommend that you check out the World Health Organization and the CDC. These are the ones that'll help you keep a close watch on what's going on and gives you the most recent quarantine recommendations. I also recommend checking out a map of the current cases from the John Hopkins website. Now, in this resource, you will find my top immunity tips, ways to move your body at home, essential oils to have on hand, self-care rituals, supplementation, because guess what? Supplementation is so critical to keeping your immune system on track. And as I've told you before, your immune system is your best defense right now. Now, a little announcement. We officially launched my supplement line. Now, it's not going, you know, we had a full exciting launch that we were going to do, but with everything going on, we've kind of just put it out there. And what I have done with the Essentially Whole supplement line, what that is the name, Essentially Whole, is that I formulated beautiful, high quality, highly absorbable supplements to help you stress less, get deep restful sleep, nix feelings of panic and anxiousness, and to stop cravings in their tracks because I know we're home right now and sugar cravings and salty food cravings are definitely at an all-time high. But also, I chose some really powerful must-have immunity supplements like highly absorbable vitamin D3 with vitamin K, magnesium, and methylated B vitamins. So I'm really excited to bring these beautiful supplements to the table. We'll have a link if you want to go check out the supplement store, but I will be talking more about them just everywhere because I want you to know that I've got some beautiful, beautiful solutions to get your body back on track. Now, also, I'm going to be sharing in this resource my go-to foods for your pantry and your freezer so that you can keep your family healthy. You know, food is foundational. I always feel like food and supplementation are the key and the cornerstone to our healthy body. So I've got lots of wonderful things that I'm buying to keep my cabinets and my freezer stocked. And I think you're going to really love some of the recommendations I'm making because they're still very readily accessible in most stores right now. So you can find this entire quarantine with ease and grace resource blog in the show notes for episode 179. You can go to my website, drmarisa.com. So now that you have instant access to this amazing resource, I want to quickly share your wins before I bring on Dr. Mary Clifton. Because guess what? We deserve to celebrate our wins, especially when it comes to our health right now. So every single day, I hear from new listeners who are recommended by you. One such listener is Anna. Now she reached out to me on Instagram, and let me tell you, Instagram is my favorite place to meet you. Right now, as I mentioned, I'm doing a ton of incredible expert interviews on IG Live to support you during this pandemic. So I got you covered literally on Insta right now. So let's share what Anna had to say. So Anna had to say, I feel like I've been lied to by many experts about my menstrual cycle. I can't tell you how many times I've been told that I need to be on the pill. What about what's really going on with my period and my body? I know that my cycle isn't the actual problem. So why can't our healthcare system focus on what's really going on with me? Dr. Marisa, I am so grateful to you for exposing the truth and giving us real solutions about our reproductive health. Shout out to you for being the voice we need Please keep giving us what we need for our hormones. Anna, thank you so much for this beautiful shout out. And I promise you that I will keep showing up for you and every woman listening in. You deserve to understand how your body works. And that is my number one goal. I will never stop educating, researching, fighting, advocating for you. Now, if you're listening, Anna, I would love to give to you a signed copy of my book, The Essential Oils Hormone Solution, with a personal note from me. Just reach out on Instagram where you connected with me and we will get that book sent out to you ASAP. Now, if you are listening, welcome to this episode. And if any interview on this podcast has helped you in any way, 
I would love to shout you out too. You can reach out to me via Instagram, Facebook, or the gold standard. Simply review this podcast on iTunes or whatever podcast platform you love to plug into. That way, together, we are changing the way women think about their bodies and empowering them with the knowledge to become the CEO of their health. Now let's jump into this critical conversation with Dr. Mary Clifton, but before I bring her on, I wanna quickly sing her praises. Dr. Mary Clifton is an internal medicine doctor in New York City with 20 years of experience in both the hospitals and private sector, and is recognized as a CBD expert. She is a published researcher, a national speaker on women's health and osteoporosis, and she's got four books, two of which are coming out very soon, one on CBD and cannabis, and a cookbook on how to support the ease of use. Now, she's also the leading voice on how to prepare for this pandemic, and she is hosting an amazing Pandemic Recovery Summit, which I am excited to be a part of. I will be sharing the link to register for this free epic resource in the show notes for this episode 179. So let's bring Mary on. Welcome to the Essentially You podcast, Dr. Mary Clifton. How are you doing today or this evening rather? (laughs) You know, great. I feel very relaxed and calm, especially amidst all of this crazy crisis. And that's because of people like you, all the amazing people that I've been talking to lately that are giving me a tip on top of trick, on top of great advice and idea. So I I feel uh, actually astonishingly good tonight. Oh, I love, love that. Well, today we're talking about how to thrive during this time of uncertainty, during this time of quarantine, and really where people are freaking out. They're panicking. They're not exactly sure what to do. And you have been gathering expertise from all over the globe, doctors, practitioners, I mean, people who really understand how to thrive in this moment. And so I'm just going to pick your brain. We're going to kind of take everything that you are learning, and especially you yourself. I know that you have dug dug into the research. And what I want to first start talking about today is I know so many of us are right now, as you and I are talking, you know, half of our country in the U.S. are in quarantine. Some of us aren't. Other people are social distancing, and it's just kind of a mess, and people aren't exactly sure what they should be doing. Can you talk to me about what is it look like to prepare ourselves to really hunker down and ensure that we protect our immune system, we protect our family, and we support the healthcare system? You know, this is really not a virus to play the. I keep hearing people saying, oh, it's just the flu or it's a form of the flu and most people recover well. And that is true. You know, 80% of the people that get sick recover, but 20%, and that is one in five, end up needing to go to the hospital to get oxygen or to get put on a breathing machine. Out of the one in five that goes to the hospital, one in five of them ends up on a breathing machine for a period of time. And the problem with uh, with just uh, letting it roll and business as usual is that you know you could get sick and uh, and present yourself to the hospital system when the hospital is already overwhelmed and really can't take care of you. So it's very important to quarantine. And maybe part of the reason that I feel so relaxed is that, you know, I've been watching and seeing how this has been progressing as it was in China and then uh, how Korea handled it. And then when it hit Italy and the numbers were so ghastly, I got myself in position to quarantine deeply for uh, as long as four months. We got all of the materials that we needed and organized all of the systems and And then as it turned out, my mother went into the hospital with a stroke and she came home and my sister and I are caring for her here, but we really can't have her be touched by anything. I think a simple cold would be a terrible thing for her to experience. So in some ways, this very deep quarantine that we've created for ourselves is relaxing because I can't even imagine being out in the community and trying to deal with a virus with a with a two-week lag time, with a two-week incubation period, and that stays alive on various metals and plastics and glass for up to nine days. It's going to be very difficult to maintain any type of sterility or uh, cleanliness when you're out in the community. Mm. 
Now, when you were preparing, when you were watching and seeing the unfolding of first China and then Korea and then Italy, we now know Spain is getting hit really hard. What were some of the precautions that you knew to take? And I, I, you're absolutely right. As we're interviewing, I'm looking at you. You do seem so calm. And I know you have had a big day. This is 10 o'clock your time. My, your time. This is 7 o'clock something my time. And so I love that you're, you feel so prepared and that you know that your, your house is very secure. What did some of that look like? Or what are specific things that everyday, everyday families should be aware of, whether they have a mom who's sick or a grandma who's sick, or maybe even a child who is immune system compromised. Yeah, I think it's very important to just try to maintain, establish and maintain as tight of a quarantine as you can. In a lot of cases, a lot of my lifestyle is very simple. You know, my daughter and I were joking about that because I already do grocery store deliveries. So having the grocery store delivery come and spraying it down with Lysol before I bring it into the house or just leaving it outside in the garage for a couple of days and letting the virus die off in large part from it makes it is is something that is just a tiny difference from what I usually do. And uh, I do all of my exercise at home because I can pretty easily, you know, exercise in my own apartment doing yoga as opposed to trying to get out and go somewhere else. So a lot of these systems I already have in, in place, but there's so many things to support people to be able to be successful right from your home to where you don't need to run to the store or you don't need to go to the yoga studio or really when you get down to any of your needs, so many of them can be handled by just putting together an Amazon order once a week and then leaving it alone for several days before you, you know, before you go ahead and uh, get into it. And it's more, I think, of an anticipation of your needs you know, of thinking about what you're going to need a week from now so that you can get things ordered and in place. And then you're not rushing at the last minute to try to find something that you can use. And I also think that a lot of my needs have been very simple for many years. I ate vegan for many years, for almost eight years. And so it's very easy for me to eat a bowl of rice with some hummus and black pepper and a squeeze of lemon and think of that as a really lovely dinner. (laughs) I think a lot of people would view that as something way too simple and not delicious. Uh, And certainly my other quarantine mates feel that way. (laughs) But I'm enjoying eating some really simple food and getting my exercise in the living room. Although if I were by myself, it would not be in front of Family Feud and Jeopardy. (laughs) So I'm making some modifications, but I'm also not by myself. You know, I have people around me that love me and I love them. And uh, that's always an important part of surviving and thriving is making sure that you honor those relationships of the people around you and support everyone. Absolutely. I agree. We are doing the same thing. So much of what you just said is really echoing in our home. We have food delivered. We have a gym in the garage. We can work out in the living room. You know, there's so many great apps and YouTube videos on how to work out right now. Um, One of my dear friends, the Betty Rocker on Instagram, she's doing workout videos every single day. So there's just so many ways to plug in. And I think that you're absolutely right about the deep connections, not only having connections within your home, but we were supposed to be in Hawaii, like right now, celebrating my husband's um, parents' 50th anniversary. The entire family was going to fly out to Hawaii. And this trip had been scheduled almost two years in advance. Like that is how much it took to coordinate everybody. There was about 15 of us that were going to be there. And it was heartbreaking. It was actually my husband who kind of convinced the entire family that we have got to go into quarantine. Most of the family members who were traveling with with us were over 60 or 70 years old. So we felt very uncomfortable with anyone going to Hawaii at that point. But what we decided to do over the weekend was on Saturday, we gathered all of their friends, we gathered all of the family members, and we invited everybody to Zoom. And we must have had like 50 people on the Zoom call celebrating their anniversary from all over the country. And clearly not all of those people would have ever been in Hawaii with us. And so there is so many wonderful ways for us to connect in, even if you're not near your family, whether they're in California or Philadelphia or in Florida and Texas, we have really great technology 
or we have text messaging that we can create those deep connections even if we're separated. Oh, yeah. The communication is fantastic by phone. I actually just FaceTimed with my grandkids down in Nashville and watching them hop around after their bath. It's 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 very fun and can be really silly and, and great. It's not real life, but I mean, that's such a great substitute for the period of time here that we're all just uh, a little bit more isolated than usual. And I'm an extrovert. I don't like being uh, stuck at home. I mean, the end of my work day after I put it all away almost always results in me putting on some boots or tennis shoes, depending on what time of year it is, and just wandering New York City and taking it in and maybe stopping and getting a bite or or maybe not, or, or wandering past my favorite stores to see what's the latest fashion. And um, all, all of that is obviously curtailed and totally different when you're out in the country like this on quarantine. So, but there's, but there's other, other things that are really valuable and it does give me a lot of time and a lot less distraction so that I can focus on some creative things that I want to do and also focus on really great food and getting my exercise, even though my schedule has been crushingly busy recently. I know. I want to talk about that in just a moment. Before we move into what you've got going on, I'm so excited for the resource that you're creating for all of us. I want to just shift gears. I know a lot of people want to know how to support their immune system, right? Because at the end of the day, all year long, it's the number one focus we should have when it comes to any level of virus or environmental threats. And there's a lot of confusion about what we can do to prepare for our immune system. I can clearly there's basics like making sure that we're reducing our stress levels, making sure that we're getting deep restful sleep, making sure that we're not consuming sugar and we're not eating a lot of processed foods. Even if we're in quarantine, that doesn't give us permission to eat a bunch of processed foods. Like there is a no processed food rule in my home. There is a, you know, five ingredients or less on any packaging, but most of the time we don't buy any packaging at all. And so those are kind of tried and true lifestyle, right? Making sure that we're moving our body. But let's talk about what are some of the boosters that we can look at? I know people are buying vitamins. They're not sure about what to do with these vitamins. There's a lot of misinformation and a lack of clarity here. Oh, I think the great thing that you can really relax and rest into when you're thinking about any of these things is that the uh, the Alzheimer's diet, the breast cancer diet, the osteoporosis diet, the uh, menopause health diet, all of these diets come back down to eating excellent whole grains, you know, high quality uh, proteins in the form of beans or grass fed meats, and then plenty of fruits and vegetables, lots of water, very nice and alkaline. So what Whatever you're doing, you know, to help to support your immune system, it's also doing all of these other great things for you. So, so those are all very important. But when you're thinking specifically about vitamins for stimulating your immune system, my favorites right now, especially for protection against serious viral infections, would be vitamin D and selenium and vitamin C. And also zinc. Now, those are vitamins and trace minerals. So I'm sorry that I referred to them as vitamins. But uh, vitamin C has a ton of great research around it for protecting you from all kinds of things. It supports healthy contractility of the heart and reduces irregular heartbeats, irregular heart rhythms. It helps to promote healthy endothelial function and also reduces bronchospasm. It also protects the kidneys in the setting of getting a contrast dye exposure. And it's also been studied in the ICU in over 2,000 patients. It's been found to decrease the duration of time that ICU patients have to spend on the ventilator. So for example, if you go into the ICU super sick with an upper respiratory infection, like what it has the potential to happen to some of us, the ICU time can be decreased from five days down to four days, a really remarkable improvement, an 18% decrease on average. And the vitamin C that you consume concentrates in your adrenal glands and in your brain. And in the adrenal glands, it works to help stabilize the HPA axis and and control cortisol responses to inflammation. And in the brain, it appears to help with mood and, and regulate depression and anxiety. So it works really nicely with all the other things that you're doing to help you have a very healthy outlook. 
And the interesting thing about vitamin C is that in in the real world out here where we're all living and uh, at various levels of health, there's about a 7% rate of vitamin C deficiency. But when you get into the hospital, people in the hospital have a rate of 47% vitamin C deficient. And the the sicker you are in the hospital, the higher your risk of being vitamin C deficient. So right now, it's critical that you supplement your vitamin C and make sure that you supplement that in divided doses over the course of the day so that you have plenty of antioxidants just in case you do actually get sick. And so that means we're taking it several times throughout the day to ensure, because as vitamin C, a water-soluble vitamin, we use it. We use it or we lose it. So we want to make sure that we're actually using it consistently, not taking a mega dose just one time a day, breaking that up over the course of the day. Yes, that is perfect advice. A mega dose once a day if you have to, but if you can take it several times a day, even better. And like you said, if you use it or lose it, so you're not going to run any risk of getting vitamin C toxic. It can sometimes give you a little bit of loose bowels, but for most people, most of the uh, products have figured out a way around that. So it's not a problem for most. Absolutely. Okay, let's move into vitamin D. And that's the one where everyone, a lot more deficiency going on with vitamin D. And a lot of people want to know, what should I be doing with my vitamin D? How much should I be taking? And there definitely are concerns around people thinking that they could overdose on vitamin D. So can you speak to that a little bit for us? Yeah, I think right now it would be a good idea to take a good dose of vitamin D. It does store up in your liver. So you don't, so you can sometimes get uh, quite a bit of vitamin D stored up. But I think for the next 30 or 40 days, it's perfectly reasonable to be on a daily supplement. It's not going to induce the toxicity in that short time. And vitamin D impacts the immune system over all kinds of different cells. In fact, most immune cells are actually able to convert non-functional vitamin D into the functional active form of vitamin D right on the cell surface. So that tells you that the vitamin D is very, very important for immune function. And it helps the T cells prepare the antigens appropriately to present to the rest of the immune system. The T cells, I like to think of as sort of these debutante balls. They, they're they like the debutante ball event planner. So you get a, a new debutante, a new foreign body. In, in the system, the T cell is responsible for getting it all dressed up and presenting it to the rest of the immune system so the immune system can get after it and make it go away. So if the T cells aren't working properly, then we don't get to mount the rest of the immune response, all of the immunoglobulins and other, other things that are really needed to kill invaders. So this T cell function is super critical. And vitamin D is really critical in getting those T cells to respond appropriately. And in terms of dosage, what are we looking at, especially if we're looking at like maybe 30 to 40 days? I know that right now people can't go to the hospitals to test where their vitamin D levels are at, but I know that a a good chunk of us, 30% or more of us are struggling with a vitamin D deficiency and most of us have no idea. So what are we looking at for kind of a boosted dosage without any, any real concern around overdosing? I think you could very easily boost without overdosing on 2000 international units a day. And then if you're concerned, if the weather is good enough in your area and you can get outside and expose some skin for 10 or 15 minutes a day, that's perfect. We are getting into the time of the year when you'll be able to convert some vitamin D from the cholesterol in your skin. And that's the best vitamin D, super natural and very active and functional. So that's another great way to get some vitamin D. I think all of us Northerners get like three months worth of vitamin D. Yeah. (laughs) Otherwise we have to supplement. Supplement. Yes, because it's true. A lot of places are still not very sunny. We're still, I know we just hit spring literally within a couple of days ago, but a lot of, maybe a lot of places are still not feeling very spring like yet. So no, I know. no. Definitely not uh, here in Michigan where I'm uh, quarantining. It's, I think, 30 outside. I keep thinking I'm going to go outside and take a walk, and then I decide, oh, I mean, I'll just... No, it's still like it's freezing <laughs> outside. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, and then we're moving into zinc. 
How much zinc should we have? What is zinc doing for the body? I know zinc is necessary for so many reactions, not only enzymatic reactions, but also helping to support the functionality of our immune system. Can you speak a little bit? Yeah, as zinc relates to trying to reduce your risk of cold or, or viral infection, it binds to the negatively charged receptors in the oral nasal pharyngeal area, just the back of the throat and the lining of the nose. And there appears to be sort of a a negatively charged pathway. I think it's called a cath one pathway. And those charges seem to flow a bit in this whole area. So if you have some zinc coating that, it makes that negatively charged area where viruses really love to attach much more difficult to attach to. So it actually helps to prevent the infection in the first place. And if it started in very, very immediately in the onset of a cold, it decreases the duration and the intensity of a cold, decreases the frequency of school absences, and also decreases the frequency of antibiotic use. So zinc is inexpensive and and very widely available. There's all kinds of products that are on the market that you can use that have popularized zinc for the management of a common cold. Now, we can't say that it's going to behave the same way with coronavirus. We can't really say what anything is going to do with coronavirus because none of us have ever seen it before. But we know that zinc works with like rhinovirus, influenza, parainfluenza, other more common upper respiratory viruses that are spread by respiratory droplets. So it's not unreasonable to extrapolate that in other viral infections, zinc may also be beneficial. Hmm, Absolutely. Well, I do know that it does have a lot of other benefits inside of the body and it can help support the immune system. So even if we don't know if it can help prevent or help to reduce the duration of this particular infection, we do know that overall it's a, it's a great benefit to the body. And are you recommending somewhere between 10 and 30 milligrams? Like what is the dosage for, for, I know that it usually 15 is where we land, but should people step it up a little bit or should we stick around there? I think prevention versus treatment. You know, if you're thinking about just having it on board and using it as prevention, I think that's a wise thing to do right now. And then if you go up to treatment, increasing the dose a little bit more. It also is known to sort of punch holes in the viral capsid. Viruses sort of cloak themselves with these floor length, fabulous thick coats, and it makes it very difficult for us to get antivirals to them or to just try to get at them with the immune system. But zinc will will punch a bunch of little holes in their fancy coats and make it a lot easier for all of these different products to get in and kill them. So zinc is very powerful in the setting of viral infection. Love it. And then I know you mentioned selenium and I know that there's so many great immune system benefits to that. I know as a women's hormone practitioner, I talk a lot about it for thyroid function, for a hormone function, but could we just be eating Brazil nuts? Should we be supplementing with selenium? I mean, how- Or organ meats, you could eat organ organ meats. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's like, uh, no. No, no, thank you. It's also so in true. seafood too. Yes. But selenium should probably be in our food, but the problem is our farming practices, you know, where farmers have been growing. I mean, especially when I'm driving through Michigan and you drive past all of these cornfields that have been cornfields now, I mean, for 50 years, for as long as I've been around. And the same crop growing off the same land depletes a lot more than just the phosphates and nitrates that the farmers put back into the land. It's all about growing a big plant and not necessarily an, a, a nutrient-dense yeah. plant. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of these trace minerals in the soil are, are, are truly just getting depleted and the food isn't as good for us as it used to be. And the selenium is one of those trace minerals that we run the risk of being deficient of. There's a number of issues that are a problem with being selenium deficient right now. But one of the biggest concerns is that selenium is very important for preventing mutation of the virus. These RNA viruses like coronavirus mutate, they have the capacity to mutate every single time they replicate. So in an individual host who's sick, 
they can mutate multiple times and get more and more virulent as they run their course, especially if the host is co-infected with influenza or parainfluenza. The two viruses can share data with each other and they can both learn how to be more aggressive in the future. I mean, you can't be so aggressive that you kill off every single host and you can't be so aggressive that you kill them within a couple of days because then, you know, that then you don't have anybody to infect anymore. So the way that this virus is operating, laying low for two weeks and then coming on looking like every other virus, but then taking this wicked turn at day eight or nine, you know, this is a very intelligent virus. It has definitely been around and talked to a lot of other viruses. And my concern is when you get here to the United States, there are so many people who are selenium deficient and uh, that these viruses will be able to uh, mutate and increase their virulence over the course of the next several months as they spread. Mm, I absolutely agree with that. I think people don't realize how smart viruses can be. I always attribute to like the movie Alien, you know, like that's how scary a virus can be. And it's just, we don't think about it because they're so teeny and we can't see them. It's really intriguing to me. Anything else? You know, we covered the, the big, the big four and those were definitely the big four on my list as well. Are there other supplemental recommendations that you have found to be beneficial for us during this time of crisis? The other thing I have to recommend is CBD because, you know, we have data in the rat model, not in randomized controlled human trials, but they took a group of of rats and gave half of the rats a CBD supplementation and then exposed the entire community to influenza virus and not our virus, but rat influenza virus. (laughs) And they were able to show that rats that had been pre-treated with the CBD had a significant decreased experience with the infection. They were able to still go play and eat and things, and the other rats were really laid out and sick. And when they tested their blood, the rats who had been pretreated with CBD had decreased levels of every single cytokine measured but one that was associated with inflammation, marked decreases up to 87%. So when you're looking at a virus that has part of its mechanism of making people really sick as this cytokine storm, it's very interesting that the CBD can so dramatically reduce the cytokines. I think that pretreatment with CBD is just as important as pretreatment with any other vitamin. And really, when you look across our world, because of the crazy prohibition that has been in place, you have... 2 billion people that are sick with vitamin deficiencies or mineral deficiencies of one or another, but there's probably 4 billion people that are deficient in cannabinoids and are dealing with endocannabinoid system dysregulation because of it. So the CBD is a great thing to add to everything else that you're doing. And when we're talking about CBD, can you talk a little bit about, because I know some people, definitely a lot of people have tried it. I'm, I'm even, I have family members and, you know, definitely near and dear family members um, who use it for all kinds of reasons, inflammation, pain, anxiety. So talk to me about when, if we're looking into CBD as a way to quell inflammation, because ultimately that's what we're really trying to get a handle on using the endocannabinoid system. What level of dosage, what should we be looking at, Dr. Mary? Most patients start with a serving size on the CBD of somewhere around uh, 20 milligrams. And a lot of my patients end up settling out somewhere around 40 or 60 milligrams, uh, either in uh, divided administrations or just taking 60 milligrams at bedtime because they enjoy that benefit of a deeper night's sleep. So that's where I would generally settle out. Some of my patients end up closer to 100 or 200 milligrams a day, but boy, that's when we're really treating like pain or very significant anxiety. So in a lot of cases, somewhere between 20 and 60 is a really good place. Perfect. That is that is so so such a great start. Such an easy place to start. And knowing I so because you are my go-to expert on this topic, and we're going to have to have you on another time to have this conversation, especially as you're getting ready for releasing your book. Now you have decided to bring together a number of doctors and experts around the world to really speak to 
not only this virus, not only what's going on and how to protect our immune system, but really how to thrive during this time. Can you speak to me about this beautiful summit that you have created that is live right now? It's live right now. And it's, it's, it's been such a great summit to pull together. I'm just honored and really a little humbled by all of the outstanding people who came forward and uh, agreed to be involved in the summit. It's a great group of health professionals. And then we also tapped into the survivalist community for some great ideas about preparedness. Just in case things get a bit out of hand, it's always important to have an understanding of what you might need. And some of these people have been thinking preparedness for decades. They know about water and food and heat and shelter and and how one goes about acquiring those things. So that is also very relaxing coming from a girl who typically, you know, leaves my apartment. Right, New York City. Day. Like you can see yeah. your little um, your little market across the street from your apartment. You're just like, you could skip down the stairs or down the elevator. Like I love New York for that. Oh, yeah. There's a bodega in every corner. I actually have a, a little grocery store right in my building. So I have to just go around the block and pop in there. And then if I want to go to Whole Foods, that's like a block and a half away. But if I feel like I've been sitting most of the morning and, you know, I'll, then I'll, I'll, I'll run down to Whole Foods to find some. Uh, but yeah, I'm picking up some freshly cut fruit and running right back home, you know, every day. So, so this whole like, okay, wait a minute. Now I have to think about food for the next four months. Like, how does that look? for a girl like me. So that does take a little bit of planning and talking to these people has, has helped me so much to think about it in a logical way instead of just stress buying and freaking out and buying a bunch of stuff I'm never going to eat. That's so true. And so I'm really excited. So I just want to invite everyone, each and every one of you who are listening right now, if you still feel like there's confusion or there's friends and family in your life who you know you're afraid that they're not prepared or they're not exactly sure what to do, this summit has interviews from doctors, from people who know how to prepare. I mean, covering a gamut of topics from mood support to cognitive support to dealing with viruses like this. I mean, and everything in between. And the beautiful thing about a summit is you just pick and choose which topics do you want to listen to from the lineup that day? I mean, you guys know how a summit works and it's going to be so beautifully put together. I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm going to be talking about stress and, and what it looks like on a physiological level, how we can change our physiology in an instant and how we can send safety signals to the brain so that we're not reacting on an unconscious level and don't even know it because that can absolutely lend to decreasing our immune system and a whole host of issues over time. Yeah, the stress and pressure that we are all under right now is unprecedented. There's so much that everybody is trying to do in addition to everything that we already do. And so even though the uh, time of the commute is withdrawn and there's other things that are lessened, you know, some of us are homeschooling, it's just leading to so many crazy new complex problems for a lot of people. And it's hard to not let it run away with you a bit. So I understand where everybody is at, and I'm hoping that the tools and the protocols that are delivered in this summit are going to get you from here to there with much less anxiety and stress. Thank you so much, not only for joining me today so that we could talk about this and we can go into the nitty gritty of some of these concerns that my audience is having right now, but that also you've created an even greater resource that I can steer people to. So you guys can go and check out the summit. The link's going to be in the show notes, super easy to grab. And Mary, honey, just remind us really quickly what the summit is called. It's called a uh, pandemic recovery. You can find it at pandemicrecovery.com. Perfect. Thank you so much, my dear. And have, <laughs> have a wonderful night. You have a great evening too. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. As Dr. Mary mentioned multiple times during the interview, there is so much that we can do to protect ourselves and our family by staying at home. She also shared her amazing supplement recommendations, which I wholeheartedly agree on. Those have been the supplements that I've been focusing on the last several weeks because they are really the game change for boosting our immune system. Now also, I just wanna remind you to continue to wash your hands regularly, order items to get them delivered to your home so you don't have to go out very much or any time at all. 
Stay away from people who are sick and don't forget to wipe down any high touch surfaces if you have to go out and about. This is all about flattening the curve and not overwhelming the healthcare system and the workers who are working tirelessly to keep everyone healthy. I send so much love and prayers to the workers on the ground, on the front lines, helping to support our family members, our friends, the people who need it most. And that next step is I want you to go and register for the Pandemic Recovery Summit because it's free and it's a phenomenal resource on how to prepare not only for right now, but for whatever is to come. That link to register for free is in the show notes for episode 179. I'm going to be listening to all those interviews. I really want you to come on in and listen to them as well so you feel prepared for your family. And also, be sure to check out the epic resource blog today that I created just for you on how to navigate quarantine with ease and grace. Again, you can find it on my website or you can go to the show notes. It's there as well. And last but not least, I want to quickly add that although this feels really, really crappy right now, each and every one of us gets to choose how we want to feel. We have the ability to manage our mindset. So I wanna invite you to ask yourself when you're feeling funky or you're not exactly sure what's going on, ask yourself, how do I wanna feel right now? And after you ask yourself that question, I want you to think of a memory, cultivate a memory or multiple memories that elicit that emotion that you want to feel and let those memories flood your mind and flood your emotional state and really shift in to feeling that level of love or joy or good feelings or whatever it is that you wanna feel in that moment. And because when we feel good, when we're in that good feeling mood, we make decisions from that place and we have more creative ideas that come to the surface. We are geared to create amazing solutions when we're in a space of emotional expansion. So I hope that this little technique supports you when you need it most. Goodness knows it has supported me so many times when I've been through difficulties and hardships because hardships, they're not going anywhere. Life is fraught with hardships. It's how we manage them. It's how we solve those moments. It's how we manage our mindset that really dictates what's gonna happen next. So I wanted to just share with you because I know sometimes we can feel stuck and we can feel like we're the victim of our circumstances. But when we get into that higher state of being, when we get into those good feeling emotions, all of a sudden we cultivate different creative ideas. We get different goals on the table. We visualize something bigger and better. And that's what I really wanna open the door for you today because I know that a lot of us are feeling stuck and sometimes just a minor tweak can shift everything. So I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by and listening into the Essentially You podcast. Coming up next, we are getting back on track to the content that you know and love on this show. I am bringing on Jennifer Powder to disrupt the diet mindset and provide us with sustainable solutions to lasting weight loss. This woman is so authentic and so amazing. I know you're going to love this episode as much as I loved interviewing her. Until then, I'm sending you so much love and light right now, and I promise you we are in this together, and I can't wait to continue to support you every step of the way. See you soon. Bye.